from our humble beginnings to the complex world we see now, the growth of mankind is a constant reminder of our unique potential to change the destiny of the world we live in. We have this potential because we have the power to imagine something greater. We have the power to imagine a world without boundaries and the will to make it a reality. More than 10,000 years ago, when the world was still in the grip of the Ice Age, migrants from the eastern shores of Asia crossed the natural land bridge of ice that existed at that time across the Bering Strait. Despite low odds of survival in what must have been one of the most treacherous journeys through the Arctic in human history, they hugged the coastline as they sought new fishing grounds and lands to explore. They continued to travel around the Pacific Rim and, in time, came to inhabit what is now known as the North and South American continents. They made up the original Native American tribes, tribes which became powerful civilizations of their time. All this was a result of those first pioneers who had boldly made that crossing long before. More recently, in the 19th century, this same kind of pioneering spirit emerged again in the North American continent with the desire to unite the east and west coasts of the United States by railroad. At that time, many doubted the completion of a coast-to-coast -coast railroad, thinking it a near impossibility. And even if it were possible, the question remained as to what the payoff would be in laying track through the middle of nowhere. The pioneers and visionaries of the past forged their plans with bold ingenuity and forward thinking, culminating in one of the most massive and important projects in U.S. history. In September 2005, a modern-day visionary, the Reverend Dr. Sun Myung Moon, in his address to inaugurate the newly founded Universal Peace Federation, called for the need to build a bridge or tunnel across the Bering Strait, joining not only east and west, but also north and south. This was a call he had originally made as far back as 1981. He stressed the vital role of this project in helping to not only reduce poverty, but to also reduce conflict in our world, and that this project should be regarded not as a commercial venture, but as a global peace initiative, and should therefore be taken up by a coalition of governments, non-governmental organizations, corporations, as well as the United Nations. I'm proud to say that I'm a, uh, an ambassador for peace and have been for about three years now, and uh, I'm one of literally thousands of ambassadors for peace all over the world that are committed to this vision of Reverend Moon to creating a world of peace. This is a project that epitomizes unity and cooperation and goodwill which our network uh, stands behind and promotes. I think all Ambassadors for Peace can be very eager in their support of this, of this project. Whenever you build access to new geography, a highway, a, rail, a railroad, a seaport, what happens over time is you get new economic opportunities and new population movement simply along the uh, locations of the route. And as far as the governments are concerned, they also create a lot more jobs for their constituents. They generate a lot of business and trade that's now not possible. And they generate a huge tax base and an, and an enormous increase in property values that is not possible without railway access. Not only does it combine North America and uh, Siberia and, and Russia, the former Soviet Union, but it also links other continents that are adjacent to those two continents. So we're talking about a, a construction project that is beyond construction. So why would anyone want to go all the way north up to Alaska, cross over into Siberia, and then come back down south? And what I found out if, as I educated myself a little bit on the project is taking a look at a polar map of the world. 
And when you do that, you find, for instance, if you drew a straight line, the shortest line between Chicago and Beijing, it falls considerably north of the Bering Strait, not south of it. If anything, in terms of building something on a straight line, the Bering Strait is too far south, not too far north. And uh, probably another study to really try to understand what the sort of social, even spiritual benefits would be. Now that's kind of hard to quantify, but people need to have a way to share in that vision. The more we trade with people, the more we respect them, the more we like them, the more we rely on them, the more we trust them. And a railway connection, a high-speed electric railway connection, will bring us a lot closer together and in larger volumes than airplanes could ever do. This is a tunnel connecting two continents. And this creates changes in people's lives, greater sense of community. This is something that's not just good for the world. This is something that's essential for the world if we're going to have world peace. If our motive is a good one, it, uh, if it's one um, that is geared towards uh, bringing people together in brotherhood or sisterhood, and I think it is, uh, then uh, we will see it contribute to a more peaceful world. This is an effort of goodwill, of intercontinental goodwill, and you really do need an organization as expansive and as visionary as the Universal Peace Federation to shepherd and initiate and lead a project as ambitious as this uh, Bering Straits Tunnel Project. The concern of the Universal Peace Federation is the realization of global peace through the cooperative efforts of Ambassadors for Peace as a far-reaching and extensive international resource, this major new peace initiative will gain great momentum. In this spirit, the Bering Strait Tunnel Project can be achieved and will become a significant document of the human effort toward building a unified world of lasting peace.